the last few months, in terms of Google Cloud, we have additional support for Cloud Run. That was one thing that was added. And uh, in for Azure, I think there are some baking improvements that were done. Uh, typically, when you deploy to the VM, there is a bake and then deploy. In uh, Azure, uh, there was this limitation that you have to have a bake in the pipeline for it to deploy. You couldn't just have a deploy with the pre-existing bake. And also, there were additional improvements, performance improvements that were done with it. Um, it's, so those were some of the big changes in terms of uh, Google Cloud. For the AWS, the launch templates is the another one that was implemented. Uh, there, for the launch templates, you can have this you know, combination of spot instances versus the reserved instances together. Uh, so those were some of the changes. And uh, which version of Spinnaker are you currently using? Which version of Spinnaker? Like the latest one is 1.30. Okay. We are in under the 29. 29. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere high 20. 29. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, yeah, so I think David was the uh, one who's driving the releases, build and releases. Like Matt. Yeah. So we, we just introduced also. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Matt. I'm on the TOC for Spinnaker. Uh, work at JPMC. Yeah, what, what bots do you target in Spinnaker? Uh, so a mixture of PCF, uh, Cloud Foundry, um, Kubernetes on on-prem and public cloud, um, and starting to move towards ECS as well, as well as Lambda. One of the changes that Matt's been working on uh, for people who target AWS, there's there have been some plugins uh, for deploying to Lambdas, uh, and he is uh, doing the shift to get those into the main code base so they're easier for people to deploy. Plugins are a good mechanism for lots of things, but for things that are like pretty fundamental to the functionality, we just decided it was easier to have it in the code base. It's like easier to maintain. We're, we're kind of moving in this more mono repo direction anyway. So like, it, it's true that Spinnaker being multi-cloud can sort of bloat pretty easily. Uh, but you know, I don't know, all the kid, cool kids are doing lambdas, whatever, like lambdas are a thing that people want. So we figured we would try to make it easier. Uh, anyway, I have some pull requests to review, but it's it's great that it's, it's gonna get easier. Is there a time frame that you're expecting for the lambdas? Like to be released? Yeah, so it's kind of in a weird state right now where all the deployment logic is already in Cloud Driver and the plugin literally just adds some stages that use that code. Um, so I, I've got pull requests open for moving the stuff like just lift and shift with some minor code smell stuff. Um, there's some pretty weird stuff that it's doing, like forming cloud driver URLs natively and calling them using um, like their own OKHTTP OK clients and stuff, which is a bit painful. Um, I'm not sure I want to go and refactor all of that at the same time as moving it over in case I break it. Um, so that's kind of a debate I'm having right now is whether to go and fix it now before it gets in um, or get it in and then commit to fixing it over the next couple of weeks or months or whatever. Um, but it's pretty substantial the amount of refactoring that would have to be done. I'm totally fine to move it and fix it later for what it's worth. Yeah. Um, have, have you guys run into any, like, there's something that you wish you could do, that could Google, something you could target with Google Cloud that it doesn't, Spinnaker doesn't do, or an AWS function or a Kubernetes function where you feel like you could use a new feature or you feel like you run into a bug or something like that? For now, um, we are interested in run the cloud run at target, but we didn't do nothing. I just um, GCE in GK, GK, so that's for us. Yeah, there's been quite a few pull requests related to cloud run recently. So I think Opsimax have been working on that 
Um, so, I guess that's coming soon, if not already yeah. released. Yeah. I think the base stuff got into 130. I think there's some more there's some more PRs that didn't make it, which will probably be in 3.1. Yeah. I don't actually know the date. You, you might know better than me, but it's in the next month or so. Yeah, yeah the changes for the GCP would be kind of in the next two, three weeks. Yeah, to go back to your original question about time frame, so Lambda, the pull requests are open, so oh. as soon as they get reviewed. Yeah. Perfect. So the Lambda, the 131 could have been sorry. Lambda and uh, the rest of the team. <laughs> We usually also go through the list of open issues in the Git and see which ones we need to prioritize and things like that. I don't know if you want to do that here. But any, any issues that you guys have that you want addressed or any concerns with respect to what the functionality that you are seeing now? Uh, now you try to use like a secret chip, Google Cloud secret chip manager to start the valories and like cloud, the, uh, cloud driver secrets, you know, we face some issues, <clears throat> but, but we didn't go deep there. Google Cloud Driver Secrets Manager was part of 130. Uh, so you say you're saying you tried it and you had some issues. Yep. So do but you raise tickets for that? Are there issues? In I, I see that there is a open ticket. Oh, there is. Uh, yeah, yeah, but just for AWS Secrets Manager thing. I see. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I think we, we have to run through the Git issues. The last time we looked under the GCE, and it wasn't there, but then. Later on, I found that some of these are not labeled correctly. Uh, and we have to go through those issues and label them properly so we can uh, identify these are the Google issues and uh, assign it the right place. Okay. Spring Boot upgrades and things like that, right? And uh, yes, ish. Uh, so I have a I have a talk tomorrow. Well, we're, there's a TOC panel tomorrow. We'll all be on this panel talking about kind of more generally what's been going on. Uh, but then I have a talk tomorrow afternoon about some specific stuff we've done at Salesforce. And yeah, we're we're pushing to do you know a lot of boring stuff. We've been working on Spring Boot upgrades. Uh, and we're working on a Gradle and Groovy upgrade, and then we're gonna maybe get to Java 17. I wanna talk to Matt about that, because maybe we can coordinate. Um, we've done a bunch of stuff internally at Salesforce that I just haven't had time to push upstream, including a bunch of uh, I don't know, improvements or new, new features to the AWS provider that I feel like there have been open issues about for a million years, other stuff about launch templates, um, and I, it's unfortunately they're in like a stack of 100 PRs and you know it's a lot easier to get them up in order as far as conflicts and stuff and I I've just been stuck you know every every week or month or whatever it is it feels like every day we have more customers which is great but then we have some we hit some other scale issue so that's also part of what I'm going to talk about tomorrow um, yeah so if people are if people are using 
you know, or want to be using launch templates with the AWS provider. I mean, it's maybe not the best way to manage my task list, but if enough people say, hey, I really need this thing, and, I, and I'm like, I know we have it, and we have it internally, and it's just a matter of, you know, moving it over and making the PR, even if it's out of order or whatever. Like, if people talk to me about it, and it's something that we've already done internally, then that'll motivate me to get it, to get it out there. Yeah, so that's an interesting one, right? You have a lot of changes that you have in upstream there. Yeah, I wish I wish we didn't. I mean, I, I gave a talk at the last Spinnaker Summit about some cool stuff about targeting, you know, basically targeting GovCloud, uh, the GovCloud partitions in AWS. And, you know, there are other people making PRs about, like, FIPS, FIPS compliance of this or that. And anyway, it's like I, we did it already, but I haven't had a chance to get it upstream. So this conference is, it's the next year, it's 2023, but it's only six months after the previous one. Anyway, maybe the next one will actually be a year from now, uh, and I'll get to catch up a little bit. Yep. So you mentioned FIPS compliance. So one of the issues with the uh, current cloud driver with AWS is that it's using V1, AWS SDK V1. Yes. And for truly FIPS compliance, it has to use V2 because it has some additional things in there. You know, I. I guess I should start by saying I am not a FIPS compliance expert. Uh, what I think I know is that uh, at least part of FIPS compliance is hitting the right endpoints. Yeah. Like you can go to these web, AWS web pages and they have like the regular URL and the FIPS URL and like across a bunch of different regions and a bunch of the different AWS services. And what I think I know is that uh, the code that we have in CloudDriver at Salesforce is hitting the FIPS URLs. So, uh, and we're also still using the same version of the AWS SDK as upstream. It's 1.12. dot whatever, 176, I think is what it is today. Um, so the fact that we're hitting those URLs is a big part of it. And then the fact that the communication actually works means we're using the right ciphers or you know, encryption algorithms that those endpoints accept. So I don't know what anybody else wants. I thought that was I thought that was it, but again, like I'm not I'm not an expert, so I, I don't know. And I will say that uh, we do have a a very special little hunk of code actually written by like an AWS support person that builds those URLs. It's it's not rocket science. But it's like, you know, instead of being ec2.aws.com or whatever, it's ec2-fips.aws.com. That's, of course, not the real thing, but you get the idea. So it might be that to get those URLs out of the box with the AWS SDK, you do need to upgrade to something newer. Uh, and we found, we found another way. Yeah. So th that is the main one. In AWS SDK v2, if you have a flag called FIPS, it ensures that that's the only right. So you have to do it with your own two hands, and now there's like a Spinnaker config flag, and it's per. I want to say we did it per account, so you get to decide if you're targeting this account and you want it to use FIPS endpoints. You say use FIPS endpoints, true, and then it uses them. And there's another little flag that I added called like log endpoints, and you set that to true, and then you can actually see in the log like, hey, it's really working. Check it out, because otherwise, like. Right, like I'm not, I also am like not on the audit the things team at Salesforce. So somebody who wants to go to our AWS like panel, you know, dashboards, CloudWatch, whatever, and prove that we're really using all the right URLs all the time, like that's, that's not how I spend my day. So, but if I can look at a log message in Spinnaker and I can match it up with an AWS web page that says this is the FIPS endpoint, then I get to check a box and move on to the next thing. So, all right, people are interested. Good to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so the, the ones who are catering to federal government, uh, right? They absolutely have to have some of these things, right? Yeah, um, I, I have a bunch of issues here in terms of open issues. Yes, it, one of the things that 
that uh, we've been trying to do is uh, triage these issues and put them in the right groups so at least we know which cloud environment is having a problem and uh, because we know the cloud run is something that we are doing it AWS is something you can do or you guys can triage quickly uh, and I, I think Apple guys are also doing AWS so uh, you guys are also and I think they've been more more involved with the secret stuff too uh, I don't know, does somebody from Apple usually come to the regular CloudSig meetings? Yeah, it's Ben actually. Yeah, so I don't know if Ben has been writing that code with his own two hands, but somebody on Ben's team has. Uh, I don't know if it's 10 a.m. Pacific time, if that's a time that you guys could meet. You know, it's a regular, there's a, that Spinnaker governance repo has a like a Google calendar with all the SIG meetings and CloudSig's on there. You, anybody could join, you know, whenever they are. And there, there are some SIG-related channels in Spinnaker Slack. Uh, and, you know, I wouldn't say they're super high traffic, but if you have a question, so somebody will notice. And if nothing else, I'll probably notice, and, and I'll ping Ben so that he sees it if he doesn't otherwise. And Ben's boss is also here at the conference. You should hit him up. His name's is Didisi. He's a, good, he's a good guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, just that, that's actually all I wanted to connect in this cloud sig. If you don't want to go through the details, it, it, it's a lot of issues. I think if you're regular here, then it makes sense. Uh, the summit meeting and whatnot makes sense that go I, through all the issues. Yeah, I mean, this is. It's probably something to do offline, but uh, there is somebody from AWS, an actual AWS employee who has spent a bunch of time in the in the code base for the AWS provider, and she came back from parental leave not too long ago and was like, "Hey, David, are there any issues I need to work on?" <laughs> and, <laughs> and I pointed her at a couple, but you know, I don't know, I don't know them all, uh, and so if there are some AWS issues. Uh, send it to me or send it to her. I don't know if you guys know Pratibha, but um, yeah. anyway, I can, I can connect you guys. Um, yeah, there's the, the issue with the user data cloning the server group. That one still is open. That she was yeah, I think it that. might have gotten auto-closed, but. Uh, it, it, it reopened. Oh, good. Um, yeah, I, I've tried to avoid diving into that because it's, complicated <laughs> uh, but it's great if she's looking at it and if she's not she, maybe I'm, she's back she's yeah. looking at it. I don't know but if she is looking like at that specific one uh, she, she might, was she might need a reminder she, she has know. comments on that one I, I do think that like as we get more more spinnaker users who use these other clouds and these other platforms will will identify more opportunities for um, integrate more integration points um, adding more cloud providers or improving what what is there um, it is hard for us as a, as a community if we're not using it. It's hard to understand where the the pain points are. And one thing that I, I've seen in the past is folks will come up with workarounds for the organization, and that that's that's great because you get your work done. Um, we all it's it, it's good to pass that back to the community to say, hey, your product like this this tool didn't do this thing, so I had to work around it in this way. And then that's really good insight to us where like, hey, if everyone's trying this workaround, maybe we should just fix it in the product, fix it in the project and, and win for everyone. I guess uh, one other plug is that, you know, in the end of it all, uh, if we're software developers and we're writing, like writing Java code for a living anyway, if there's a bug in Spinnaker, it's just some more, you know, at least JVM code, Java, Kotlin, Groovy, something. And so, it's maybe a little intimidating to dive in the first time. Uh, and certainly if you're trying to debug a UI issue also, then you're like also in the universe of JavaScript in addition to whatever's happening in the back end. But, uh, you know, IntelliJ is a pretty powerful tool. You can click around and find out what's happening typically fairly quickly. Uh, and, you know, I guess this is one of the just like realities of Spinnaker. You know, it's it's hard because it's got its little tentacles into 
all these different parts of people's systems, their internal Docker registries or their you know credentials for Kubernetes cl clusters and their LDAP servers for identity stuff. And, and so if you have a problem, it could be that it's, you know, whatever, the cosmic rays are all aligned and it happens to you, but it's very difficult for somebody in a different environment to reproduce it. And so I, I know that it's hard to like ask for help and it's hard to get help. Uh, and sometimes it is actually easier to help yourself. Uh, and I'm happy to try to wade through, you know, talk to people about how to set things up on their machine or what I do, you know, every day. Like I never run Spinnaker on my local machine. I never run all of Spinnaker on my local machine. I never run one Spinnaker service on my local machine. I never do it. I figure out everything I need to figure out some other way. Uh, like, so people worry about having big, expensive machines. And, you know, even if you are just running the automated tests of CloudDriver, it takes a lot of juice. So I, I want to say that, like, you can do it on a, you know, 1984 Mac, but um, it, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be that bad. Like you could be a Spinnaker developer t tomorrow, like just like any other Java project. Um, I do have a, a, there's a presentation in Spinnaker's YouTube um, where I go over plugin, uh, plugin workshop. And as part of that workshop, um, I'm running, uh, I forgot what service, but I'm running a service locally. And uh, sh I show how to use telepresence to run Spinnaker in a cluster and then run your, your one service locally and you can hit debug endpoints in your, in your local machine while using the UI in Spinnaker. And it extends to even, you can debug into your plugins code as well. It's pretty slick. Um, I should probably write up how to do that and post it on the Spinnaker blog um, as a step-by-step -step instruction. So it's a bit more consumable than a two hour video. Um, so I'll, I'll take that as a to-do um, item. Yeah, that I think some of the issues, uh, recently there was one issue that said, uh, hey, upgraded to 1.30, I'm getting a 400 error from gate for pipeline save. And they have this log from gate. You no, know, the gate is not the one that's actually giving the error. It's, it's actually coming from a different service. So maybe for us, the best practice is to publish and say, how this flow works and where you get a problem, um, because these are distributed microservices. You actually have to look at other services also, where the actual uh, exception is coming from. So maybe we could do some of those things there as well. Yeah, I mean, there, there are endless documents to write. And this is actually something else that um, we've been focused on over the last, I don't know, every time we find one, we, we try to fix it. But, you know, we ship all our logs to a log aggregator, and when some pipeline right. fails, you go to the log aggregator and you query the pipeline execution ID, and you hope that every log message that Spinnaker emits for that execution has that, you know, as a tag, but sometimes it doesn't. And it took, and it was a bug in the code that that sort of correlation ID didn't get percolated all the way through. Um, so this is something that probably like silently goes unnoticed no. from 1.28 to 1.29, 1 1.30, but, but I think that is something that is generally getting better as the days go by. And I'm, I've been reasonably good about getting those fixes upstream. Yeah, I mean, what I meant here was because it's a distributed microservices, you need to have a log aggregator to really look at the errors. By simply looking at gate errors, it's not sufficient. Right? You, you, it's a best practice to have a log aggregator be in there and search through. Yeah, I guess, yeah, we all make a lot of assumptions. Most people these days are running Spinnaker and Kubernetes. Most people know that they have to have a log aggregator and ship their logs to somewhere, whether it's Splunk or Logly or somewhere. Uh, but people are at different stages of whatever DevOps curves, and it's true that to, to troubleshoot something, we really need all the logs from all the places. There are some reference diagrams on the architecture part of the website where it does go over the life cycle of a deployment. So it, it shows, hey, DEC talks to gate, gate talks to cloud, or Orca, Orca will hit cloud driver, and they'll, they'll query back and forth and pull, and you, you can see that, that interaction. Um, it's been it's remained pretty stable over time, um, but that's uh, it doesn't really help. Um, I think I mean it, it's helpful, but I think the log aggregator is a is a really good solution, so you can actually see where what's causing the issue. I know people aren't like shopping, looking for ways to contribute, especially not a feature that's probably as gigantic as this. But something like Zipkin or Open Tracing, 
uh, we don't have in Spinnaker, but would be really sweet. Um, and it's something else that takes another level of like operational maturity, because once you generate all these traces, those traces need to get shipped off to somewhere too. And I would say fewer companies have that set up than have log aggregation. Uh, but we would be making the world a better place if at least the code was set up for it next year. All right. That, yeah. So please, please do come to those meetings, if you like, and any of these requests that you have in a priority. Um, raising an issue may not be as uh, uh, urgent as showing up for a meeting and say, hey, I have this issue. Hey, go for a drinks. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>